The Byzantine Empire in the 15th century is now just a shadow of its former glory. The lands have been devastated and the army has been defeated. Is this the end? Has the empire been doomed to destruction? No! But we can prevent this in the latest DLC for EU4, King of Kings, in which I will lead Byzantium to reclaim its former glory. Hello, imperialists! It's Lucas. Right from the start, I can honestly tell you that you can throw all the old tutorials in the trash. This is due to several factors. The very long shipbuilding period in your country, and the fact that even if you manage to get a wall breach, you'll forget that you ever bombarded that fort. However, storming fort will always end very badly for you. In other words, the Ottoman armies are just waiting for this. This is because Byzantium now has some very interesting privileges. They are meant to give the vibe of a state in decline. The clergy has been granted the union of church's privilege, which grants tolerance for heretics and a lack of tolerance for our only faith, which is orthodoxy. And the funniest part is that all our provinces are orthodox. The second very cool privilege is the one that worsens our army. See, the chance to take a fort is minus 75%, which is very bad. But what's worse is that the morale of our army is minus 15%. And the strangest part is that all of this wouldn't be so bad. The worst privilege is relying on republics, which significantly increases the shipbuilding time in our empire, so forget about building any ships. And finally, the privilege that imposes additional taxes on our merchants, which reduces trade but makes mercenaries cheaper. All of these privileges honestly add an interesting flavor to the game as we are playing as a declining empire. We have to deal with them. Before, Byzantium was still powerful enough to deal with the Ottoman Empire without much trouble. Now it's different. In fact, I've come up with two strategies to deal with the Ottoman Empire. I'll present one of them to you in this episode and the other one later. The second strategy is much more difficult and random and who knows there may be a narrative episode 3 in the future we'll see of course i don't hide that the extensive mission tree we've received is very helpful in our journey to defeat the ottoman empire it consists of several parts initially we have a very small part focused on fortifying our country and preparing for the final confrontation with the ottoman empire but from a defensive perspective here on the left we have the part related to our conquests once we manage to rebuild the strength of our country this leads to the creation of the east Eastern Empire and ultimately the Roman Empire. The economic part involves the expansion of our jewel in the crown, which is Byzantium. There is also a trade-related part on the right. All of this leads to the building of economic power in the east. Finally, at the bottom on the left, we have the part related to our religion and its schism with Catholicism. We will strive to reconcile the churches. On the right, we have everything related to building our army and navy. We've also received several national decisions that are worth exploring because most of them lead to getting rid of these unfavorable privileges. Villages, but I must admit some of them are quite challenging to achieve. For instance, repairing our army requires having 20,000 troops and a 15% morale bonus, which is attainable. Integrating Galata is all about a specific Genoese colony in Constantinople, which imposes significant trade penalties on us. As for ending the union, we'll talk more about it in a moment. Similarly, we'll discuss the additional taxes later. In the path I'm following, it's crucial to establish the best possible relationship with the Pope. At this point, we will need an alliance with a particular country. So it's essential for us to have a common rival, which is Venice. Thus, Venice becomes our rival, and shortly after, Genoa and Epirus will as well. Of course, this will happen on November 30th, as it will be our first war goal. We don't want Epirus to receive independence guarantees from Venice, and when Venice is our rival, there's a good chance to it. Our fleet will be responsible for transporting our mighty army to Greece, because we'll soon be at war with Epirus. As you can see, our heir are quite decent, a total of 10 points, and I'll honestly advise you not to get rid of him, at least on the first playthrough, as there's an event tied to him later in the game that could help you in a war against the Ottomans. We can only invite a cheaper administrative advisor to our court. I won't even try to pronounce his name. The rest of the advisors have regular prices. But given that our economy isn't the best, I'll honestly tell you that we won't choose any advisor at the beginning except for the military one, which we need to complete our initial missions. Let's take a military advisor. Now, let's move on to the privileges we grant to the estates. And here I mostly follow standard practices with one exception. Because I can't take loans. I forgot, precisely because of this privilege. However, all the other privileges I am granting are quite standard. We're not doing anything fancy here. Finally, we take land and choose an agenda. Though unfortunately, we won't be hunting for a cheaper military advisor. Oh, but this will come in handy. We also start with more autonomy than before, supposedly to be more historically accurate. And of course, we immediately lower it. This will lead to some rebellions 
but don't worry, the Ottoman Empire will attack you before you have to quell those rebellions. We then insult Venus, really insult them, we make sure that the Pope receives that bonus, and essentially we send an advisor to improve relations with the Papal States because we still lack them. Wait, 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 I think I forgot about another privilege. That's right, I forgot about religious diplomats. Here, I'm counting solely on that diplomatic reputation. And honestly, if we had an advisor with diplomatic reputation, it would soon be triggered, but we don't have one. You can try to recruit one. A alliance with Serbia will be very useful for us. Or an unused strategy for acquiring Albania as your ally. But first, make Serbia an ally, because it's related to that mission where you get 250 gods for free, but Serbia has to like you. And if you become allies, it will like you, of course. Our ruler should lead our armies into battle. It's possible that he'll survive this process, although let's keep our fingers crossed that he die. On the 30th, we declare Epirus as our rival, and we keep our fingers crossed that for two weeks, no one will ally with them. Now we're lucky. Time to reclaim our territories. Just don't charge your army because the Epirus one is stronger. Let's wait until everything is ready and then we'll flood the enemy. Oh, what, what did I get? In any case, we completely crush the Epirus army and as quickly as possible, we move to occupy their territories. Approval of the Council of Florence. In 1439, Leonas went to Florence with many Orthodox religious scholars to discuss the matter of repairing the schism with the Pope. Under the increasing pressure from the monarchy, it was decided to gain the Pope's support and that of his subjects. The Byzantine Byzantines agreed to the formal unification of both churches and accepted the Pope's supremacy. And now we can support this decision and still maintain union with the church. But be warned, there will be a few small revolts for orthodox suitors. Alright, they won't be small revolts. Or we can decide that we don't want this union and reject it. And don't make that decision. We want to make this union. We want to agree to it. Because as you can see, for 20 years, the costs of mercenaries will be massively increased. Additionally, every Catholic country will suffer a diplomatic relations penalty with us. So they won't help us in wars against the Ottomans. A very important thing is to execute the mission of the impending doom correct. And here, if you maintain this privilege, you will have cheaper mercenaries if you execute this mission while having an alliance with the Pope. So yes, unfortunately, we have to rely on the fact that we will receive support from Catholic mercenaries. Oh no, the Ottoman Empire is sending a claim on Constantinople. Well, who would have expected that? Campaign in Thessaly. Constantine, then a spot rider in Morea, decided to join forces with Western support and oppose the Turks in Thessaly. Although it ultimately failed, it gave Constantine valuable war experience and raised the morale of his troops. We can now turn our ruler into a pretty cool general. In addition, he'll permanently gain one military point. We'll also increase the siege speed. But here, I'll tell you honestly, I recommend getting to know the mercenary companies we'll actually encounter, because we'll mainly rely on them. I have a pretty decent war commander, shock, siege, so we have enough. In this case, Constantine doesn't have to be our commander. Besides, it costs 150 military points, and that's quite a lot. I've also gone this way before. And these 10% and 15% bonuses aren't that great. Besides, these bonuses aren't the best because, for one thing. How can I put it? Our defense will be very weak throughout the Morea area. We don't want that. We get a very small bonus for faster sieges and it's just not worth it. That's why I'll be happy that Constantine gets one military point, which in total makes him a pretty decent ruler. And I'll tell you here, we'll do a trick. We'll conquer one province for ourselves, but Epirus will become our vassal. I'm doing this because the capital of Epirus will be moved to this island then. And in the worst case, if something goes wrong, there's a chance that the Ottoman forces will besiege a single province for and then, at least for a while, we'll be able to trap their army on this island. But there's a chance for it. Although the Ottoman Empire has a larger and stronger fleet, there's a chance that we can trap their army here. We form an alliance with Serbia. Unfortunately, this means I'll have to forget about an alliance with Albania, because Serbia has them as a rival and also with Wallachia. But we immediately complete this mission. And yes, let's send a call for help to the Serbs. The alternative would be to strengthen this province and the fort that will be there. To get the fort there now, we need to complete the next part of our missions and develop the province to the fourth military level. I also have a mission for four diplomatic points, but that doesn't matter, so I'll do two things at once, and now we strengthen our fortresses in Morea, or we can either strengthen our fortresses in Morea, or move it from Morea to Corinth. It's better to do this. Oh, there's an alternative, because at this point, the fort in Corinth prevents the Ottomans from passing through either here or here. You have two provinces where you can recruit your army, for example. We have two vassals, so we can grant ourselves the strong duchess privilege. And now our army down, the fleet down, and the fortresses down, we probably won't be attacked yet, but who knows. Now we keep an eye on our relations with the Pope. As you can see, we're not far from forming an alliance. Let's recruit our friends.
free company for now. And thanks to that, we can form an alliance with the Papal States and successfully complete this mission and prepare for the inevitable doom. We've also removed a false despot. And here is the second reason why I made Epirus our vassal. I wanted those diplomatic points. I valued those points more than the morale of that army because the morale of this strategy, which I'll present here, won't be that crucial. In fact, we've been given a hard shell over Epirus and we'll conquer this country for free, just as we'll be gobbling up Athens for free in a while. And now we want to focus on that. I've sent diplomats to improve relations with the Athenians and Epirus. Although no, because we have an opportunity, I'm sending a diplomat to improve relations with Hungary. I'm withdrawing him from Epirus. And this is a very important thing. This event is here. 5% patriarch authority. We want this. This is a completely random thing, but if it doesn't happen within two or three years, I'd consider Alt plus F4. This is because now, if we want to deal with the divisions in our church, we need to assign an icon. We'll then receive the following bonuses. But what's better, the icon's effect will be duplicated. An icon is a special aspect of faith that we can choose from. And at this moment, you see, instead of 5% discipline, we get 10% discipline at the start. This is a lot. Unless you want to go for cheaper development, like building a toll under your game or less aggressive expansion, which are also nice developments. But we know that surviving the first war with the Ottoman Empire is the most important thing at the beginning, then it's usually smooth sailing. I focused on discipline for another reason. Defense in depth, which gives us an additional 5% discipline for mercenary companies. Yes, we also have an advisor with plus 5% discipline, a total of 20% additional discipline at the start. Oh, and I think I got money from the Serbs because I suddenly have so much of it. Yeah? Now we have two walls to upgrade Theodosian Wall, which is the one in Constantinople. It's not any special wonder, it will be the perk you can see at the bottom. Honestly, we'll ignore this. We'll focus on the Hexamillion Wall, local defender dice roll bonus plus one. That's a lot. In the meantime, we're also slowly developing Constantinople. Remember, before developing this province, just turn on everything you have for development costs to minimize them. I also got a mission to increase manpower, so I'm doing that first. But in general, we don't want to use military points. Let's also remove the cavalry from our army and try to kill our ruler without abdicating. So we assign him to one army and let him train. Let him train. As for Constantinople and its further development, we mainly want to focus on development for diplomatic and administrative points. We need 30 development points and we can't wait until we have the Renaissance. We have to do it earlier. All right, I formed an alliance with Hungary and you won't believe what I'm gonna do with my army now. Because as we know, it's perfect and I didn't delete the cavalry. I'm an idiot. At this moment, our army ceases to exist. <coughs> Yes, we don't need our army at all, except for our commander to die here. We will need a minimum of three mercenary companies to complete this mission properly. Besides, now that we have all these alliances in place, it would be best if the Ottomans attacked us. And honestly, the easiest way to provoke them to do this is when you don't have an army. You're weak! Although, I'm lucky because the Turks didn't ally with the best allies like Tunis. You know, those countries have fleets and their troops like to land in various places. One wall is already upgraded and for the first time. Now, unfortunately, Unfortunately, we can't leave without taking a loan to upgrade these walls to level 2, but we need it, just in case. Honestly though, we always need it. As I said, you have an alternative here, a more expensive one, where you would have a level 4 fort in Constantinople. But I think it's not worth the cost. The Ottomans are being exceptionally passive this time. Not attacking anyone, I'll just check if I'm playing on Iron Man mode. Yes, I'm playing on Iron Man mode, because I was just testing certain things with cheats earlier, but that was on a different save. Okay, good, the Ottoman army has appeared. Maybe Maybe they will attack some unusual country, but it's not on our border, so we won't be the first target, at least for now. Hey, it looks like I might have a chance to integrate Athens for the first time. I shouldn't have developed Constantinople unnecessarily. Yes! We need more soldiers, without a doubt. How long can you leave? At 55 years old, I should already be in the grave, right? And now, we have a fortified fortress. Uh, where's the second bonus? Did I really upgrade the wrong wall the first time? I must be having a bad day today. The Ottoman Empire is no longer our tributary and I think we can remind them of their obligation. Honestly, I would usually take this deal, but I want to show you what happens when you manage to get 100 gold from them. Of course, they rejected the deal. Now we can either release this guy and 21,000 rebels will rise here. We'll lose only 1,500 manpower or we can keep him here. Let them burn. 
Okay, the Ottoman Empire had a great chance to crush these rebels. Well, you know, it was quite cool. Uh, what happened in Hungary? I can't believe it. What the heck? I got the Patriarch Authority for the second time. Great. And the Ottomans attacked Kandar. So, I'll be better prepared for this war than I thought. Great, we've reached 175 positive relations with Athens. So, now we send them money. And I see that I have to wait another five years. No. I was somehow convinced that it would take five years. Well, I guess I needed to develop Byzantium for that. Okay, let's wait until 30. Oh wait, I don't have to because I wanted to do everything to get the Patriarch Authority for moving the Metropolitan to this place, of course. We can't do that because we have non-accepted Bulgarian culture. And of course, we can make it even less accepted. We can just release Bulgaria as a separate country. So let's just wait now, get influence points from Hungary and Serbia. Alright, so I think we're ready for the war with the Ottoman Empire. We're taking the icon for discipline, of course. I don't want to do the mission bonus charged in distress. We only want the double value of the icon. Uh, it's not working. Hello. Where can I see that I have this discipline? Oh, right here. We recruit at least three mercenary companies. And for now, the cheapest ones. Oh no, I need four because we need a cap. So, one more company, and we complete the mission. By the way, the alternative would require our country to exist for even longer. You see, when we develop our country, sit around for a while, develop, and so on. We can complete this mission, and it will reduce the cost of reforming our army by about half or a third, I don't remember exactly. But as I said, that will be the alternative path that you can choose if you want, I'll record it for you. Now we're ready to attack with the help of Hungary, unfortunately the Serbs are too indebted to help us, but maybe they'll join in a moment. Our goal will be to capture Edirne. As you can see, we even have a numerical advantage, our empire's last stand. We're attacking! We're attacking! An amazing wall breach on the first tick, but we can't click on it, I'll show you what happens and see what happens. Okay, we're storming. Yes, of course, I'm doing this just to show you how bad it is, and I'm doing it in the usual way, every now and then consolidating the army to hit as hard as possible. But it's pointless. We can't break through these forts. And now you can see that as soon as we started this war, disaster is approaching. News reached Linus Zuft and the residents of Constantinople that the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II had begun his march on the city with the Janissary army. The Turks support him and Megalopolis was already prepared prepared for such an outcome, and many, even the poor, began to pray to God solemnly for relief for the city. I honestly tell you that now we can ask, of course, to gather as many people as possible here, we can prepare for a defensive battle, but no! We're attacking! Oh, and of course, we activate the defensive edict. Uh, the Ottomans got a bonus for the walls of Constantinople so they would fall faster. Wait, 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 no, they're still taking 40 days, and great! The Gedikins arrived to help us, led by some Giovanni, it doesn't matter. He might not be the best commander, but he did provide some manpower and sailors, which we're not using at all. But I really appreciate the help. The Okay, let's add all my vassals to this army and give them the command to attach to my army. So that's an additional 6,000 soldiers, so it's something. Alright, we see the incoming beast. Let's stack our entire army in one province. They shouldn't attack us then, again, but for fussing's sake. As you can see, a large Ottoman army is under Constantinople and a smaller one is moving here. The Hungarians aren't attacking, they're not in a hurry. By the way, in the meantime, I took the fourth military technology. Unfortunately, it's the fourth Ottoman technology, so it doesn't give us a significant advantage. And the walls have fallen. The walls have fallen. Now, if you stop Orchana in your lands and don't let his rebellion happen. And I did this. I revoked that and prevented the rebellion. See what happens during your war with the Ottomans. You'll get light bonuses for defense in Constantinople or alternatively manpower. At this point, we need these light bonuses because it will always be four days shorter for the siege. We can't fight the Ottomans here. We can't fight the Ottomans here. We need to do something else now. Wait, let's return to that province. Burn it and move away from this fortress. Let the Ottomans come to recapture it, and then we'll engage them, unless they attack the Hungarians. Let's rush to help. Thanks to the sacrifice of the Hungarian army, we defeat 2,000 Turkish soldiers. Our great victory. Oh, flat terrain. Where are we not getting a river? Wait, river, river. All right, we have to go. Okay, ultimately, we're fighting here. 115 discipline versus 105. I'm missing five points of discipline. The icon, this discipline. Hey, does the fact that there is also regular troops here make it not display my discipline correctly? Or am I I not seeing it because it only applies to mercenary regiments. Doesn't matter. We inflict massive losses on the Ottomans to ultimately defeat them in the Battle of Kursia. And now we need to quickly reach Constantinople because its time is running out. I'm an idiot because I forgot to release Bulgaria. Please overlook this campaign.
okay? I'm telling you what you should do, right? I'm not necessarily doing it, but you understand. My brain is just not functioning today. All right, we need to provoke the Ottomans to leave Constantinople, so I'll sacrifice this smaller stack of allies to them. Of course, with the support of my main army to ensure a battle under Ed Irne, which we will lose. Because, as you can see, the Ottomans immediately move away. And now we wait until the 11th, which is coming soon, and then we run to Hungary, folks, and it was intentional because the Turkish troops have now divided and we are going to destroy the Akunjul army. Because this country is one technology behind us, which is very important at the beginning of the game, and we easily crush them under Constantinople. And since we have so much manpower right now, maybe we should use it. I know I'm getting deeply into debt, I'm deeply in the red, because we have a huge overforce limit. But really, the Ottomans will repay us after the first war, at least I hope so, and we need to take advantage of the fact that they are currently dividing their forces, and we need to attack them one by one. I don't know what the Hungarians are doing in this war, Honestly, they're going in circles around their ports, not doing anything. I'm winning this war solo and they'll probably still have a big share in it. 34% for losing an army. Oh great, Byzantine merchant tax. Byzantine merchants avoid tax. They are frustrated with these taxes, but you know what I mean. It is simply a war for survival and everyone has to pay. Everyone has to. So let's get rid of this policy and collect the money. We definitely don't want to lose this privilege. A great battle at Silalik, which we win. And it basically opens the way to a few things. First, Gelebulu is now within our reach, quelling the rebels in Constantinople. I was hoping they would rise during the siege of Constantinople by the Ottomans. Unfortunately, no. But there's still a good chance they'll be wiped out by the Ottoman forces. Because I'm here now, I have support, and Hungary is here. There's a good chance we'll capture the fortress in Gelebulu now. And we even have a three-star general in the siege. And we have an even better general. Maybe I went overboard with the size of this army. Edirne has been captured. The Hungarians helped. So now we can... No, we can't because Gilibolu is still blocking my way. Oh well. Which is falling right now. And great, we're burning that province to slow down the enemy in case they attack. Did I just consolidate the troops that are attached to the mercenaries? What a cool option. And I have to detach them from the army now. How great is that? Alright, let's go. Defend Constantinople. Because it's about to fall. Why do they want it when I have claimed those provinces? It's very strange that the troops don't cross to the other side. Oh no, Hungary entered into a personal union. I mean, it's good because now I'll take everything. Okay, I'm disbanding the regular army because I can't afford it. Especially since I'll have to wait now. Hey, can I use the fleet in this war? Alright, maybe not because the Ottoman fleet is sailing this way and... Oh, this won't end well for us. No matter, let's move it to Constantinople. Let's transfer the occupation of some of these forts, of course, to my vassals. So that they pay for their maintenance. What the f***? Someone is claiming my throne. Okay, so we'll have an even more interesting situation now. Oh, and an additional rebellion in the capital. How lovely. By the way, he's not a better ruler. Time for our first government reform. And what is this? Can I create client states as Byzantium? How strong is that? All right, here we'll have to use our fleet and destroy the 16,000 Ottoman troops. Oh, this will require great precision, although wait, let it repair to the max for another month. Okay, this army arrives on the 19th. Our fleet sets sail in one day, so we wait until the 17th. Precision, ladies and gentlemen, precision, the battle blocking the Ottoman army's passage. Our fleet can retreat in 30. It must survive for 10 days, and it survived longer than the Ottoman army, okay? And now our army needs to retreat, thank you, and the fleet in four days, so we won't lose anything. We didn't lose anything great i can't believe it i managed to get the fifth technology ottoman tech at four let's get him let's get him we crush his army and here i think i'll have to sacrifice my fleet although maybe let's unassign the damaged ships maybe the rest will survive look it's retreating i'm blocking the passage it leads to a rematch well 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 and i completely destroyed their army for 10 percent war score in my opinion worth it all right and now we need to do everything on pause because now we have an ongoing battles modifier that gives 47 points to the ottomans but when we do something like this on pause. See, we still have 89%, but that modifier is gone. And there's also no Ottoman positive modifier for blockading my coast. Remember to return those forts to you, because I forgot about it. And see what I'm gonna do now. I'm breaking their alliance with Ekyu Koyunlu. It's their only ally at the moment. I'm taking all of my provinces plus one, and most importantly, taking a lot of money from them. I'm not taking war reparations, which might already give some of you an idea of what I'm going to do in a moment. Wait, wait, wait. Why do I have so much aggressive expansion? Did I really use the wrong castle spelly? I really did. Today's episode should be called How Not To Play This Game. A few moments later. 
let's say I played it all over again. But unfortunately, this time it went a lot, I mean significantly harder. I'm literally on the brink of bankruptcy. How to put it? My fleet has just ceased to exist. So yes, but at least I can freely choose the maritime doctrine, which is really cool tactically. But at least now when I attack the Ottoman Empire, I won't engage in too much aggressive expansion. And once again, we'll be using the Reconquest Casas belly, but this time for Bulgaria. We're paying off all our loans because we'll be taking out completely new ones soon. But really? Okay, we won't pay off all the loans. We're reducing war exhaustion until I core this province. And just to make it not too easy, we're releasing Bulgaria as our vassal. I forgot to improve relations with Epirus and Athens because I wanted to integrate them now. The Turks pushed out of the Western Balkans. Okay, some progress at least, but there's still a long way to go. But we don't recognize the peace treaty with the Ottoman Empire and we're attacking them again. This time for the recovery of territories for Bulgaria. And you know what? I think we can peacefully dissolve our alliance with the Serbs now. We'll probably want to take their gold mines as our next goal. At the same time, we can keep attacking towards Serbia. And now, let's turn our decline around. And we rise from the ashes like a phoenix. We won't make the same mistake again. Send a diplomat to improve relations with our two vassals, whom we'll eventually annex. And maybe a third diplomat to Bulgaria. And at this point, let's just quickly conquer. Oh, a whole revolt. No problem. We'll suppress it. I can't believe the Ottomans just landed here. Oh, the Mamluks in a coalition against me. But they weren't on the list. Great. The Ottoman army has just ceased to exist. Thank you. Okay, let them keep landing. If he really lands here, that's the biggest gift Osman can give me right now. But how come Byzantine merchants don't want to pay me taxes? No way, they have to pay. We need to bear the costs. We need to make a war effort. We have to keep on attacking. But luckily, the Ottoman Empire has been attacked by the Mamluks, who were in a coalition against me. Even Crimea is in a coalition against me. Yes, this will be very interesting. But most importantly, we have the opportunity to fix our army now. I think it's worth worth investing in it as soon as possible, even at the cost of that expensive advisor. We make this national decision and get rid of this rather unpleasant privilege. Finally! We need to build five more churches! Well, that's ahead of us. Just as ahead of us is the fact that Lucas is really an idiot today, and he didn't add any states where he could. Oh, only in one area. He's not such an idiot. We're passing through the strait. Remember when the Mamluks joined this war? In fact, the Ottomans are already lying down. They have 6,000 troops. The Mamluks have 34,000. So we can calmly cross to the other side and capture more fortresses, we'll have 15 years anyway to develop our country further, to seize the gold in Kosovo. Of course, I love you Mamluks, go ahead. It's funny that even the Serbs have already attacked the Ottoman Empire. How should I put it? They no longer have an army. Fortunately, everything happened earlier, and I took it. Oh, Crimea is still around. Oops, let's form a royal marriage with the Poles. I hope that after the war we can have an alliance as well. Right, Poland friendly? I'm somewhat concerned about that Venetian army at our borders. And we are ending the war with the Ottoman Empire as follows, since the Mamluks are in a coalition against me. I'm a bit afraid to take a province on the other side of the strait. If they stay, we'll take it next time. So I'm ending the war this way. I left Ederne because there's a good chance that the Mamluks will release my province here and return it to me. Or why didn't I get that again? WTF, but I still have a claim on Serbia. Declare war. Like breaking truth, it was just announced, it ended. Doesn't matter. Ederne is a very easy war goal against the Ottoman. Ottomans, that's why I left it. After the war, we form an alliance with Poland, but more importantly, with the Austrian Emperor. When did I lose my alliance with the Pope? And we've reconquered Bulgaria for ourselves. And look, we'll gain an accepted Bulgarian culture that won't take up a slot. That's powerful. We'll get a Puzzy One Shock General, also very cool, and further territorial claims. Additionally, this province will receive some really nice modifiers, but I want to check something here. Normally I wouldn't risk it, and I would take it only after integrating Bulgaria. I hope I'll remember to check this, because sometimes these modifiers disappear after integrating a vassal, and I just want to verify this. A little spoiler, yes, after integrating Bulgaria, this new Constantinople modifier remains. Let's try a new privilege for faster integration of our vassals, and to avoid a penalty for it, and let's annex Athens, which has fallen into our hands, and this allows us to continue our mission. Peloponnesian Renaissance. Wow, we'll get the Renaissance here. That's really good. A nice bonus. A nice bonus. So the Renaissance has appeared in Athens at this moment. Let's try to promote the appropriate institutions to spread faster. This is a mess. Normally, if we had already conquered what we have, we would have at least 40% trade share here. But now we're getting penalties, and that's not happening. The Byzantine Empire has access to special vassals. Of course, I don't want to make Bulgaria this kind of vassal, so they'll keep a copy. But look at what happens. It takes five of our force limit and gives it to Bulgaria, which receives the following bonuses. Regiment costs 50%, meaning they'll have cheaper troops. They get mapped with 5,000 manpower 
and increased manpower in their provinces. I think Byzantium now playing with vassals that we have to wage wars for could be very interesting to watch. I must admit, I plan to play it in a different episode, dedicated, story-driven, but that's in the future. Meanwhile, we're taking Athens for ourselves. There are a few other things I see here. Oh, like we've just got our Priya Nori. So in fact, it has all the same features and decisions here as a march, except for this one. But all the others look very similar to a march. We can send our officers. This gives them even better morale. We can give them 10% of our manpower and so on. But surprisingly, they're much less loyal to us than a normal march. My super good general actually has two in shock. And we got such a cool advisor, Gemistos Plethon, not to be confused with Plato, who's someone else. But why is he an animist? All right, we're now allied with Austria and Poland. It should definitely protect us from any coalitions. Bulgarian culture has joined ours. Awesome. All right, we definitely need to reduce the costs of our mercenaries, which are surprisingly high. Look at how expensive this palace guard is. So expensive. Oh, no, no. Okay, we're disbanding them. Hello, hello. Oh, and one more thing that I can tell you now, which was there before, but I never noticed it. You see, mercenary companies have the technology of the countries from which you hire them. For example, Novgorod has the fourth level. They also have their technological group, so it's worth paying attention to these other indicators. I didn't know about this on honestly, until last week. Hey, I didn't have a free company before. In that case, we can get rid of some other expensive companies. And now that we have a moment of peace, look at what the new Byzantium has gained. Advisor code, improved relations, tolerance, true faith, a super stable country. But the other developments, core creation cost equal to the Ottomans, 25%, very powerful, additional missionary strength, yearly patriarch, authority, very powerful progress in government reforms. Well, fortresses a week, discipline and additional manpower. The new Byzantium ideas are very strong. A shattered state. Time to reverse it, to be honest. Reversing the decline with quite good bonuses. Maybe it'll help us financially because I must admit we're constantly on the edge. What have the Mamluks done? Wow. Haha. <laughs> but they didn't get a coalition, did they? And the coalition against us is dissolving. Oh, the Ottoman Empire is bankrupt and I thought I'd find a way to wage a faster war against them. I also sold that one province to Albania. I'll want to make them our vassal shortly. In the meantime, we move on to further conquest. Quests. Oh, stability, really. What does she need it for? Definitely not me. Our main goal will be Kosovo and the rest, to be honest, we'll see. But what about Bosnia? Ragusa. Okay, hey, this Ragusa is somehow strangely situated in Herzegovina now. Let's take advantage of the fact that we have big bonuses for our mercenaries. Really, they fight very strongly. Oh, what a great downfall. Okay, our country has slight corruption issues. So now, haha, we need to focus on suppressing it. And great, in Constantinople, after introducing the Renaissance in our country, face eating has appeared. I must admit, I'm very happy about this. And now, as you can see, I've conquered the entire territory of Serbia and we'll hand it over to Bosnia. Sorry, Bosnians and Serbs, I don't understand this conflict between you, but... Well, it turned out that Bosnia still has territories to reclaim, not Serbia. Because honestly, the only province of value to me is the one. I have the rest here for the next mission tree. We annex Epirus at last. Time to avenge the earlier battle loss at Bar and continue our mission. And now we can either get a core creation cost reduced by 10% for 30 years, shorten separatism duration, extra military points, or faster autonomy reduction for 35 years, less aggressive expansion and diplomatic points. Honestly, in this case, I'd go for less aggressive expansion and those diplomatic points. But if I were going for a build focused on the core creation cost being as reduced as possible, then I'd take core creation cost. And overall, things are going well, right? 20 years, and the entire Balkans are practically under our control, or will be soon, as I'm preparing for a war with Venice. I mean, it won't be that easy. I need the help of the Poles for this. And as you can see, I'm improving a lot of relationships. I lost the alliance with Austria, but that was intentional because there were several conflicts, and I was afraid I would call them to war against Poland, Czechia, or Venice. Never mind. On our further journey, we need an alliance with the Russian devil, thanks to the completion of this mission for the suppression of Russian autocephaly. All right. I don't know what that word means. Thanks to this, we get the following super bonuses to Patriarch Authority. And I must admit, it's very, very powerful for Byzantium. And look, instead of half a point, we get one point of Patriot Authority this year, 55%. These are really cool bonuses that are starting to pay off. Anti-Unionist Revolt, I'm not surprised at all. And we'll have to get rid of this union soon. Where are you? 
you, Bulgaria, run, help in this battle. But what? They just chickened out. Even the Republic is attacking the Ottoman Empire, and it's being destroyed right now by peasant uprisings in their country, which in fact isn't too good because it raises autonomy in those Ottoman provinces. Am I seeing this right? Byzantine rebels on roads. How can you not be happy about this? Development of our first ideas. Honestly, it seems to me that aristocratic and quantity ideas would work great for Byzantium at this moment, but in our case, mercenary ideas are the best. And why? You'll see in the later part of the episode. And the island came to me, so let's immediately delete the fort here. Hey, and I can now have the Knights of Rhodes as a company. Wow, another free company. What happened here? But these Knights of Rhodes are cool, so it's time to invest in Kosovo, develop Ark, and get gold here. Honestly, this view is quite sad. I don't know why, but the sight of the Ottoman Empire's demise somehow fills me with sadness. And now, let's focus on extracting the Genoese colony from our provinces. By the way, I really wonder how I'm gonna double my trade income. 600 gold? Haha, <laughs> good one. Okay, now that we've developed the gold mines and a few other things, I need to focus on stabilizing our country. All right, it's probably time to expand our trade center in Constantinople. I wonder what would happen if we had a third level. Oh, I'd get two base production. Ha, okay, I'm fine with that. Where's my development? Oh, I got a trade depot. Ha, okay, this increases our trade power even significantly. Just give me half a ducat more. Got it, we have it. We're integrating the Genoese colony, which currently causes ooh hoo hoo more penalties to be lost. Oh no, I got confused with the missions. Here I need seven gold and these bonuses are beautiful beautiful. Maybe I should have taken those missions for 600 gold, but really Constantinople is now a trading powerhouse. Eh, what do I care? Ha! I must admit it complicates certain matters in this region, although the Genoese don't have such a strong alliance. We're vassalizing Albania. It's time to introduce the privileged magister officerum. Thanks to this we'll have faster autonomy reduction dependent on our advisors and additional bonuses, and you can see that with this bonus, Byzantium will basically have advisors as cheap as the Czechs, because we already have cheaper advisors from our national ideas plus 10%, which makes it minus 25%. Very powerful. So going for innovative ideas from the start could also be a good idea. And now, unfortunately, mercenaries will be unfavorable for us for a very long time. A very long time. For 30 years. But I think our budget can survive this despite everything. Yes, these are all free companies. Okay, and from what I can see in the near future, I need to perform a very large mission for the merchant Estate to manually get rid of this negative privilege. Unless I complete this mission. No, I can't make this decision because I need to get rid of that privilege. The first development from the era, and I'll be honest with you, aggressive expansion would be more useful to us right now. Alright, despite the massive waiting time for our ships, I'm still expanding our trade fleet. Hey, I missed the mission for the development of Macedonia. Let's do it. Alright, I'm also starting the process of integrating Bulgaria, so we need to prepare for war with the Ottoman Empire. This mission to expand trade in Thessaloniki is interesting. Here we'll just wage a normal war. Maybe Cyprus will fall to us in the process. Hey, look at what the Mamluks are doing. I can't wait for this campaign with this country. Wow, how nice that the Ottoman Empire is attacking me. But wait, does this mean that when my heir ascends to the throne, I'll have some revolts? Oh no, I just had very low legitimacy before. And so Constantinople has become the queen of cities. I must say, these bonuses are really cool. And look at this decision. We can now steal development from all conquered provinces without any losses. This is incredibly strong. In fact, this will be only the second country in the world to have something like this. There's another one in Indonesia, if I remember correctly. And we get some national decision too. But where's my development? Oh, I would have received development if I had upgraded buildings. But since I haven't upgraded them, we got everything at the second level. Wow, this province gives me 5,000 manpower, 129 trade, and 8 gold in total income. This is madness. And look, we can further expand Constantinople significantly. Local trade power plus 50%, but also a province. Where was it? Oh, uh, it's right next to it. Only Constantinople must have 50 development. Constantinople is outgrowing its walls. Centuries of exhaustion, depletion, and catastrophe have shrunk the city of Constantinople, to the point that there were many farmlands within the walls. Fortunately, this trend has been reversed and the city has now surpassed these walls, increasing the population. I must say that's very nice. And you know what? We'll make Albania our planarium and I'm very curious about how this works. So okay, we'll give up five points of our force limit to make it all go to Albania. At the same time, I'd like to send officers to them. It costs very little, but they get huge bonuses. And since I don't use my manpower at all, I'll be giving up 10% of my manpower so that it goes to them. I must admit that I would most like to create Wallachia and Moldavia as our prenoirs, as they are 
are very cool military countries. Alright, let's choose the next set of ideas and I'll go with administrative ideas, I just can't not choose them. When I played as France earlier, I chose influence ideas because it allowed us to create clean states. Right now we probably won't need it since we already have that option. Alternatively, if we want even stronger mercenaries, infrastructure ideas are very good because they give us mercenary discipline. However, with administrative ideas, we'll be conquering more of them and have cheaper mercenaries. So we've already made our way into Anatolia with everything conquered. And for the next conquests, I'll wait until we unlock the third level of administrative ideas. We've retaken Nicomedia and renamed that province. All right, let's improve Poland's opinion of us because I'll have to temporarily break our alliance. To be honest, these religious revolts are getting bigger and more annoying. We need to separate our churches because the population wants it and these revolts are becoming more frequent. Okay, we need to end the union of these churches. Honestly, Poland, I'm gonna break our alliance with you. Temporarily, but probably forever, unfortunately. I just took the land a moment ago. No. And so, recently, a city of the Ottoman Empire fell under the onslaught of the Mamluks, and the Turks were expelled from Anatolia. Finally, I can get rid of that hopeless privilege. Well, you could say that we just fixed our navy, we've just repaired our ports, and at the same time, we've ended the union of the churches. So, it might be quite challenging to restore the alliance with Poland, but it should be doable. And now we can complete the mission, recover, authority, which gives us an additional privilege and changes our government type. This form of government looks much more interesting, and I must say, I already have an idea for another Byzantium campaign. I wonder if you can guess it. Now we have the legitimacy of our dynasty, but you can see that it costs one patriarch authority per year, and honestly, I don't want this privilege, at least not now. At a later stage in the game, we need to conquer a few provinces, so wars are ahead of us. Hmm, but now, if we take this government reform, it always gives us additional patriarch authority at this point. This way, we already get 1.5 points, so maybe it's not that bad. So I'll take this privilege after all. Finally, we can reform the theme system. You can see how it boosts our manpower culture. We accept it and it's our primary one. But what's this? We get another government reform and we can check the missions we currently have. One of them should give us bonuses for mercenaries. And I'll be honest with you, both of these are quite interesting because we get Vanel Gangoart, very, very strong mercenary troops. Another thing, and you can see what bonuses we can choose for our pronoi. Then we move on to the following bonuses for our own army. So here, going for religious quantity and trade ideas in Byzantium would be highly recommended. Many of these elements scale nicely here, but as I said, we'll go for the second part. Under mercenaries because, you see, we get professionalism for the army here. Now our army organizer will reduce our mercenaries cost by 3% for each of his levels up to 15% at the maximum level. It's something, at least we can have more of our special vassals thanks to this decision or reduce the fact that they take away our force limit. But honestly, I like this reform the most. Mercenary manpower plus 50%, mercenary discipline plus 5%. Extremely strong. In the meantime, let's focus on expanding our navy. What do I need for that? Innovativeness of 40. So it might take some time. Look at the cheap advisors we have as Byzantium. Time for a new synod. And this gives us 15% stability costs. You know what's the coolest part? We have this monument that will also reduce those costs. If we played it right, we could practically maintain non-topper status on breaking truths, reducing our stability by three and practically increasing stability for free. In the meantime, I annex Bosnia. It's time to attack Genoa. Our allies will help us, which is great. I think the Papal States can be our next target. There are many smaller countries with large forts, this will be a challenging war. Time to conquer Rome, to thank them for all the humiliations we've endured. Maybe we'll even loot it, why not? Hey, wasn't I supposed to avoid losing development? So how does it work now? Rome reclaimed and I'll test a strange approach that I didn't use before. Namely, getting rid of most, if not all, of my mercenary armies. I'll only recruit them during wars. I can't believe I'm not taking this government reform. It's so strong, but at the same time, useless for me. I'd have to play under different ideas. We're playing under mercenaries. So we'll take elite mercenaries because it also gives us the right government form. You probably remember it from the French episode. We get militarization for our mercenaries, which increases their discipline. I just realized I have nothing for mercenaries here. We need to start our invasion of the Mamluks now. Do I really have so few provinces to conquer? But we have allies, I have them too. I literally have only mercenaries in my armies, except for regiments with artillery. Here, no mercenaries, although I think they have actually appeared by now. But I added 10 regiments of artillery to the army. In the meantime, we'll be using our navy, completely annihilating the Mamluks. We have bonuses for trade, because I forgot to switch, hehehe. <laughs> but we're doing fine anyway, great. And I wanted to 
make my next vassals for a new war. They already have cool ideas for that. The worst part is that I think I have no way to quickly reset the peace period with the Mamluks since I conquered Cyprus. I could have left it. Rome converted. They're doing it. Mercenaries are really holding their own. The funniest thing is that I don't have to worry about their manpower at all because they have a huge amount of it. And there are just so many companies. A coalition. Who cares about it, right? The empire must grow. And I think this victory marks the beginning of the Byzantine Golden Era, which opens up the path to Asia Minor. Hey, look, these provinces will slowly be converted to our culture. Loyal Byzantines have long shouldered the burden of the constant wars of the Basilius. Those times are now over. Hehe, <laughs> a rebellion. Well, not that bad. I wonder if this is a special event for Byzantium when you cross the overextension limit. Oh, I think it is. Hey, look, it's actually changing the culture to ours, and it's a result of such events. Honestly, for the first time in a long time, I'm considering taking Cory ideas because, you see, although it's actually the second time, because I took this idea when playing as Poland. Core creation cost, 5%. It may not seem like much, but you know, we would have a 60% reduction in coring costs or diplomatic to conquer more. I think I'll go with this one. I managed to conquer Georgia from our vassal and of course we'll make them our special vassal. Then we'll attack Karaman to reclaim territories for them. And it's time to restore the Senate in our empire. I wonder if there will be any special reforms. I don't see any for now. The royal purple and honestly, our Byzantium, oh woo, will now produce dyes in Athens. Or we could develop the production here, but not really. We definitely want dyes. And we can either keep the old Byzantium color or change it. Honestly, I want the color of Rome. We're finally heading in that direction, but it's pretty glaring now. But it will be a miniaturized version. Let's raise another army because I'll tell you, you. It's time for another session of Sultan Mamluk conquest. But I think I made a mistake by not taking infrastructure ideas. We have a lot of missions to develop provinces development. One of them, for example, is Roma. And I'm developing Roma, maybe not the most optimally, but I want to reach 30 development points. No, total. I'm annihilating the Mamluk army. Come here, Mamluks. Somewhere here. All right. Another battle with these armies. We're destroying them beautifully. Even me. It's just a shame that we can't see how much discipline our mercenary regiments have. Another battle. This time the Mamluks engage in me, not the other way around, and we win it. Three battles fought. All right, let's retreat to our own territory so the mercenaries can replenish. Look, I have almost 60,000 mercenaries and they only cost me 10 gold. He's not even joining the battles anymore. Perfect. We've just gained war score cost about 20% less against provinces and against other religions. A bonus for conquering. Well, this time I'll definitely take a lot from the Mamluks. A lot. Deus Vult, my friends. Jerusalem reclaimed and Antioch as well. Hey, will I have Turkish mercenaries if I complete this? Awesome. Well, this is interesting. Now we can proceed in a few ways with the Turkish culture. And honestly, I'm going with mercenaries. Converting it into Greek culture seems like the best option after all. But I'm very curious about those Turkish Janissaries. Hey, they're really strong and cheap. All right, now it's time for a very difficult war. As you can see, I've conquered everything from the Mamluks. A tough war against Venice, where the enemies will have greater strength than us. No one is supporting me in this war. I don't understand it. And our goal is to reclaim all these Islands. This province has a very bad name. Oh, and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The entire Burgundian army is in disarray. We've dealt a significant blow to the Venetian fleet, and winning wars against the Venetian Republic has resolved all our issues with those Italian republics. But I have to say that I have the impression that on this patch, AI is doing much better overall. Look at the size of the tags, everywhere how much we're conquering. I've already developed all our cities, literally every one of these provinces to level 30. It cost me quite a bit of mana. Never mind, we're expanding, rebuilding them, and we're crushing the Papal States, and Constantinople is the seat of the Patriarch again. Hey, and do each of these cities I have here get these following bonuses? Wow! Now we can convene an assembly, okay? And what can I do here? Wow! Even less stability. I can't. Or missionary strength. But mine are currently unemployed, even though they were converting all the time. And here, I'll regain a bit of manpower. But only once every 25 years. Weak. All right, and there must be 300 provinces in Europe that follow the Orthodox faith. So it's quite a challenging task, I must admit, because it seems like I have a broken mission. Yes, I need to be the owner of Macedonia, have a marketplace or a stock exchange and so on. So improved versions, 25 development. I have 38. I have a 92% share in the trade of Constantinople. Oh no, wait, it's not the trade of Constantinople. It's the trade of Ragusa. Hey, those Zevians with muskets look really funny. Very amusing. All right, it's time to reap the benefits of developing our provinces. And honestly, I really like these new events. Well, look, we can now have a stronger trade fleet with a double effect or get more loans or free enterprises increase trade efficiency and don't reduce absolutism. Honestly, I don't know what's best here. We'll go for a stronger trade fleet.
And let's expand it now, we're building 45 new ships. Oh, we have a mission to produce glass in Naxos. These missions are really atmospheric. Almost every economic mission gives us specific bonuses. But not for the whole country. Not something overpowered. No. To a single province. To a specific area. Look at how much Greek culture we already have. Incredible. These events are really cool. But what did Spain do here? Hey, we have a competitor for building an empire. It seems like it. Hey, that march from Georgia is really doing well, unless it's overwhelmed by the enemy's numbers. But it has new skills. Skins. And honestly, these missions that are here for culture conversion would be great to use in the United States. I mean, in North America during its colonization. As in, when you're creating the United States and not migrating. And you have missions that would, for example, colonize these provinces near you. It would be really cool. Byzantine mosaic? What is it? Hey, we can just export our artists abroad to Russia for a significant amount of money, even though they won't pay us much. Spain is doing much more, but they don't really like me. So how about the Danes? Okay, addition also made me a bit of a monster. No, I'm rather indifferent to them. Hmm, they gave me the money. I like it. And we can do this every 10 years? There's just an overwhelming amount of cool stuff added in this patch. There's so much of it. And there are also plenty of unnecessary wars. My manpower is finally being put to good use. This time, we'll really take a lot of land from the Mamluks. Our empire is expanding, and these conquests lead us further following our mission path, thanks to which we now have claims to the entire Egypt. And we've reached Mesopotamia. It looks nice, doesn't it? Like I already have a fantastic caption. In fact, the Eastern Rome has been restored. Now, let's increase production in Mesopotamia, and how much of a production bonus do we have here now? See? Oops. But what's this regency? We've managed to take clothes from Egypt, and now we have specialization in trade there. No! What is this? A second monument in Egypt? And so Constantinople becomes a real megapolis metropolis. And if we exceed 75 development, these bonuses will double. Wait, 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 they double twice? At 70 and at 75? How powerful is that? In this province, I'm making 15 gold, a real jewel in the crown of this empire. Although I know I'm not making much for this time period. But okay, okay, remember that I don't have trade ideas and I haven't really dabbled in trade companies because I've already gone through most of the tree at this point. And basically all that's left is to unlock what we need for further expansion. I focused on the economic, religious, military aspect. But now we need to continue with the further part of our conquest. Unfortunately, mainly conquest towards creating, as you can see, Rome itself. In this episode, you can see another orthodox country. This is the Russian Empire. I show my tactics for quick conquest in Russia and how to effectively earn a lot of money with this country. 